wanted to shout out our, our old pal Bill Finley from the TDN because uh, he had he had a really interesting week in review this week uh, where he made the case for Kenny McPeak for an Eclipse Award for champion trainer. Now, I think the, the presumption is that Chad Brown is going to get it. Uh, Chad Brown stable has earned over twenty nine million dollars. That's over three and a half. That's about three. Yeah, it's over almost four million dollars more earnings than second place, which is Steve Asmussen. He leads all trainers in graded stakes wins with 46 grade ones wins with 15. So it's it's obviously that Chad's had a very good year. But Bill says that he he's not going to vote for him. He's going to vote for for Kenny McPeak. And I just love this quote from Bill. He goes, how can I justify voting for McPeak over Chad Brown? Because as a voter, I can make up my own rules. And that's, you know, that's true. We, we see all sorts of ridiculous votes from Eclipse Award voters every single year. But I don't think this is a ridiculous case to make because I think – it's to me, you know, talked about compilers before right. and, and horses that end up at the, you know, at, at the stallion barn because they picked up some, you know, crappy grade ones when horses, you know, retired and, and weren't at, at their peak anymore. You know, I'm not disparaging the year that Chad Brown has had, but he's got the horses. Right. He's got the horsepower to, to get those numbers. And he's just at this point where if he doesn't win a million grade ones, it's like a disappointment. Right. And shout out to him. Like, that's fine. Like, that's that's all well and good. But Kenny McPeak is going to have a horse of the year with a horse he bought for $40,000. And he stepped out of the box and ran her against the boys in the Travers. And I think that that counts for something. And he's had a good year, too. He's, he's had over $14 million in earnings. Like I said, he's going to have the champion, the, the horse of the year. And I just I, I love his attitude. And yeah, I'm just going to the quote from the story. It's, Kenny McPeak says, uh, here's the way I felt about the Travers. I had won two Alabamas before. I thought if I ran her in the Alabama, it was going to be a really boring race. The way she dominated the three-year-old Philly division, it was going to be a bit of a yawner, and that was going to be bad for the game. Mm -hmm. To give it a little life and inject something a little different for the sport in the summer, I made the decision to run her in the Travers because I thought she was good enough. With a little luck here or there, she might have won, but I was really proud of her effort, and I think it elevated her status as opposed to otherwise. Like, we're crying out for that. Yeah. Like, that's something, yeah. that's an attitude that we are crying out for in racing in, a, in an era where everybody is so conservative and doesn't run their horses and enough and wants to pick and choose because there's too many graded stakes so you can have like the exact kind of campaign you want for a guy to step out of the box and to have that kind of overview of what's good for the sport and have that level of thinking that macro level of thinking that hey who gives a shit if we run in the four horse alabama and win by 10 lengths is that gonna is that gonna you know to move the needle for anybody right. or is it more right. exciting to run her in the Travers? And it was exciting right. that head to head battle with her and fierceness. Who's going to be three year old or, you know, one of the contenders for three year old champions down the stretch. I, to me, I think that that's, there's, there's a case to be made that, you know, yes, Chad Brown had the most grade stakes wins. Yes. He had the most grade one wins, but who had the biggest impact on the sport this year? Not to mention he won the Kentucky well, Derby with mystic Dan. I haven't even brought that, that up. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and to, another, you and know, to another, me, another, Another modestly bred horse. And, you know, just, just looking at the numbers, just in terms of, of total starts, uh, Chad had 80, 865 starts, obviously had million dollar horses left and right. And McPeak had 542 and he's got the horse of the year with a $40,000 purchase. who We ran against the boys and almost won the Travers. To me, he had the bigger impact on the sport. And I actually agree with Bill. Yeah. And, and, and how many times have you said that in your life? <laughs> <laughs> but, but Joe, I think, I, I, and I, I'm sorry, I almost jumped the gun, but I, I think, when you start and finish a resume um, in, in an industry that focuses so much attention on the Derby and the Oaks, I mean, that is the, the, those are the races that the majority of the industry cares about. And obviously, the Breeders' Cup as well, but the Breeders' Cup is a series of races in the sense of you have different you know, delineations amongst, uh, amongst distance and, and surfaces. We focus and talk so much, and there's hundreds of millions of dollars spent on trying to buy horses to win the Oaks and the Derby. And the guy did it in the same year with modestly bred horses. You could, especially in comparison to the seven figure horses that were in the gate against them both. So to me, that carries a lot of style points. Um, it's not just statistically, this guy had X number of wins. This guy had Y percentage of, of stakes wins. It, it, you have to account for what is he given? What inventory is the guy have? And 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 what did he do with it? And to win the Derby is huge style points. To win the Oaks, huge style points. To run Torpedo Anna against against the boys in you know arguably the toughest race in the toughest circuit, huge style points. 
to win the Breeders' Cup with her. Huge style points. And then on top of it, he's also, as, as an individual, he's an entrepreneurial. I mean, he's, he's got his own podcast. He's promoting the industry. He's doing things that are positive, bringing positive attention to the industry as well. And I think that's part of, of, of that should be part of, of people's, you know, voting uh, thoughts as well. That should be part of the rubrics. It's like, what else is he doing to benefit and, and, and enable the industry to move forward and to be better? And you can say what you want about Kimmy Peak. He rubs some people the wrong way. I mean, he's, 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 he's not just a happy, jolly guy all the time and everything like that. Nobody is. But as far as his intentions for his horses, he has nothing but the best intentions for his horses. He runs them in the most competitive races possible, and he wins more times than most trainers do. Um, but for me, it's style over substance this year. Not that the substance wasn't good enough to even, you know, be in the top five trainers in the country, but you have to give additional merit um, and influence to the things that he's done for the industry and for his horses, and w especially with the uh, with the inventory of horses that that he's handpicked himself. Yeah, I mean that's the whole point is that like the other human award for for the eclipse, the jockey is like. To me, that's a little bit more of a meritocracy, to use your favorite word. And, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> the, the word, the word of the day, the word of the year, the word of, of our lives. But no, because like, is it's you know, obviously certain jockeys get better mounts than other jockeys. That's that's undeniable. Right. But at the top level, like they're pretty much on an even playing field. And Flavian Pratt outrode everybody else to win that mm -hmm. to, to presumably win that Eclipse Award. It's not a level playing field with trainers. Right. Kenny McPeak does not have the, the, the horsepower that Chad Brown has. And you can say, you know, Chad had to, Chad started with nothing. He started with a dozen yeah. horses or so. Yeah. And like he had to work his way up to that. So I'm not saying that he's like, you know, was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, but the, the, the current landscape right. is that. Chad Brown starts from up here and Ch Kenny McPeak starts from way down here right. at the beginning of every year because of the horse flesh they had. And this guy won the Derby and the Oaks and has the horse of the year. Right. So I think you kind of have to grade a little bit on a curve, right. at least in the trainer category for the eclipses. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's my two cents and, and shout out to Bill for making that argument. One other thing we wanted to mention before we wrap for, for this week, you know, in, in that same vein of, of, you know, giving the props to people who step outside the box and, and fill the entries and aren't afraid to run their horses. Claiming crown is this Saturday at Churchill Downs. And this is one of my favorite events of the year. You know, obviously it's, it's not going to be on national TV and it's not going to get, you know, widespread mainstream attention, but I just, I love that racing does this, that, that we have a day to appreciate the hard knocking, Older horses who fill the cards every single day across this race, across the uh, Amer racetracks across America, because, you know, like we say, it's the, the top horses don't run as frequently as we would like them to. And, you know, you go up and down the cards. It's a lot. And I, I'm guilty of this, too, sometimes. Like, I'll go up and down the cards. I'll be like, ugh, 16 claimer, 20 claimer, 10 claimer. Like, it's not always the best betting product. Right. But. Without those horses, you don't have races to bet on at all. You can't, you, you couldn't run these race cards without those horses. And I just love that there's a day to celebrate the ones that, that really are the, are the blue collar, you know, kind of gear churning horses of our business because you can't do it without them. And it's, it's a day like where they don't, they're not in, an, in for a claiming tag. So they're all going to go back home to the same barns, which is nice for them. And yep. it's, there are big fields, competitive racing. I like that it bounces around. Yeah. You know, it was at Gulfstream. Now it's at Churchill Downs. So it kind of takes on that, that, that Breeders' Cup flair a little bit where it goes to different racetracks. So I'm going to be, I'm, I'll, I'll tune in. I'll probably bet a couple of races at the claiming crown on Saturday and just more, you know, more broadly, I'm happy that this is something that that the sport does to recognize like the, the war horses that we have.